Hi everyone, welcome back to another helpful video from EurekaCrystalBeads.com. Before I get started on today's video, which is going to be how to do odd count tubular peyote, you can make this great little spiral design here, um, I wanted to just remind you to go and check out our channel on YouTube or uh, check out our Facebook and you can see all of our great videos. And if you're looking on YouTube, make sure to hit the subscribe button and that little notification bell and you will get a notification every time we put up new content. So, to get started into today's video, you can see here we have this great little piece of tubular odd count peyote, and I have a neat little spiral design worked into that. So, what I'm going to do is show you how exactly you get something like this started. And what you could use this for is, um, if you make it really long, you could have a great little rope to wear around your neck to hang any pendants from. Um, you could make interesting, neat little beaded beads that you can string up, all sorts of neat little things. Um, and you can also do some variations, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So to get started, I have three different colors here of some Toho size 11 seed beads. And I have some four pound fire line. And I have my, just my little shears here to cut my fire line. But I do have a piece that's already strung up onto a size 12 beading needle. Um, it doesn't need a size 12 beading needle. That's just the size I prefer to, to work with. Um, you could use something a little bit thicker, like a size 10, if you were going to use the size 11 beads. So I have um, some beads laid out here, again, those three different colors, and you can use whatever amount you want as long as it's an odd number. Um, this is 11 seed beads, and that makes a tube, as you can see, about, about yay big. If you go much smaller, um, you might want to go, as far as the number of beads, you might want to go with a smaller bead. Um, otherwise, a size 11 bead, uh, if you go much smaller than that number of 11, um, it might get a little bit stiff uh, to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and string these up. And you can definitely play with the design. Um, you can get a lot of really funky looks depending on the beads that you pick up. And I'm just working with a, a pretty short piece of fire line here just for the sake of making the video. Obviously, if you're going to do a long piece, you would want to use a much longer piece of fire line. Um, one thing that I'm not doing, though, is I'm not waxing my fire line. And the reason for that is because oftentimes when fire line is waxed, it really helps you keep nice, tight beading tension. But in this particular case, I actually want to keep... Um, some lighter tension here. I don't want it too stiff because I want this to be able to bend as it gets longer so that way it can sit in a circle around my neck. So now I'm going to go back through all of these beads here. And if you're lucky, you'll go through them all at once like I just did. And we're going to just close that loop down. And now I'm going to take my little tail and my working thread and I'm just going to tie them in a quick little square knot, which is right over left and then left over right. Sort of like a double knot, but you do that second one backwards, and it will really help to hold a lot, lot better than a regular double knot. And then the last thing I'm going to do before I get started on the actual peyote is I'm just going to go through a couple of beads. I just like to sort of pull that knot in a little bit and start my bead work coming out of a bead rather than coming out of a knot in between two beads. So now you want to make sure that uh, you dump out a little bit of each of the colors you're working on here. And just like regular peyote stitch, you know, you're just picking up one bead at a time, so I just like to dump out a little bit of each one. Just like that. Okay. Now, the trick with um, keeping up a, a spiral pattern is you want to pick up whatever color that you're coming out of. So in this case, I'm coming out of one of those little matte green iris seed beads, so that's the color I'm going to pick up. And just like regular peyote, if you're familiar with regular peyote, like a flat peyote or an even count circular peyote, you're picking up a bead, skipping over the next bead, and going through the bead after that. Okay, and don't worry too much if your bead is kind of loose there. You can see some thread. Um, once we get into the next rows, all of these beads that we had now are going to sort of cup upwards, and we won't see that fire line. So I'm going to pick up another matte green bead because that is the bead that I'm coming out of still. I'm going to go into one of my shiny dark blue ones. And because I'm coming out of a dark blue, I'm going to pick up a dark blue. And again, I'm coming out of another dark blue, so I'm going to pick up another dark blue. Don't worry too, too much about keeping tight tension here. Our next row will really help things to come together. Now I'm picking up um, one of these little purple beads because I'm coming out of a purple bead. Now, if you're familiar with even count 
tubular peyote or circular peyote, you'll know that we normally would do a step up when we finish each row. But um, with odd count tubular peyote, there will be no step up. You will simply keep spiraling over and over and over again. Um, so we're actually about to start the next row um, or really finish this row. It's, it's Again, there's no step up, so you're just going to keep going uh, around your little tube here. So again, I'm coming out of a green. I'm going to go into my little up bead there, the one that I first added. And I'm going to start to pull a little bit, so that way it helps these beads now start to sit on top of each other, and it starts to create our little tube here. Again, coming out of a matte green, so I'm going to pick up a matte green. Go through my next little up bead. Encourage it to sit upwards on top. Give it a little bit of a tug. You can see how it starts to create our tube here. Okay, pick up another matte green because that's what I'm coming out of. Go into that. Oops. Try not to get tangled here like I am. There we go. Now I'm coming out of one of my dark blue ones. I'm going to pick up a dark blue one. Go into my little up bead. Again, you'll always know which beads to go through because they're the ones that are popping up for you that you added in the previous row. I'm just going to hold it in a way that encourages that cupping to happen. And now we'll see the start of our little spiral here. As you can see, my spiral is going to be accented by that nice little purple one. So because I picked up the color that I was coming out of, you can see how the new one will sit slightly higher, spiraled up, than the previous one. So I'm just going to do one more round here, and then we'll fast forward a little bit to show you, again, closer what it looks like as you, as you keep going around. Oops. It's a little tough to hold on to at the moment because there's just, just a little nubby there. Again, always pick up the color that you're coming out of. Don't worry about the color you're going into. And normally with my beadwork, I tend to try to keep very tight tension, but like I said, um, don't go pulling crazy tight with this because it is possible to make your, your little piece of tubular peyote here much, much, much too tight, and then it's very stiff and then it really won't want to curl around your neck or even your wrist. It actually is a really nice bracelet design as well. Um, it will sort of mimic the look of bead crochet, only it's a lot easier. And of course, once you get you know a little further along, it's a lot, lot easier to hold on to as well. As far as um, how hard I pull, I really just pull uh, my thread just enough to push the bead or to pull the bead down into place. That's really it. I want this to be very supple so it can really move nicely and it's not too, too stiff because I'm not looking for this to be, you know, really structural here. I want it to have some movement. Oops, again, it gets, keeps getting pulled right out of my hands here. So as you can see, our colors will start to spiral upwards. You can see that, that nice purple bead. So this is exactly the same pattern that I have in this one here. So now, we're going to go back to the piece that I've been working on. I had cut this short because, again, this was just for a demonstration, but um, you can see how this is, you know, the area that I was working on right here. And you just keep going around and around and around, and you get a re really neat little tube. Now, to talk about some uh, variations that can be a lot of fun, um, one of the things you can do is at this point, um, or really at any point, but after you have a little bit to work with here, at least after you, after you have about that much, you can start to increase the size of your bead. So what I could do now is jump to a size 8 seed bead, which is a little bit bigger, and I could do some rounds in a size 8, say perhaps if you have coordinating colors. Um, and then you could bump to a size 6, and then you could go back down to the 8 and back down to the 11, and you could sort of make your bracelet undulate and add neat little... Uh, neat little um, knobbies to it, I guess, for lack of a better word. Um, another thing that you can do as a variation of this is in your initial ring of seed beads, you know, in this case, I just did three different colors of an 11, but you could always do a loading sequence that included some 15s, some 11s, some 8s, maybe even some 6s. And then as you go around, again, you, you pick up whichever bead you're coming out of, no matter what color it is, no matter what size it is. Um, and if you do something like that, you'll actually get a bracelet that not only undulates outwards, but it undulates and spirals at the same time. So there's a lot of fun things you can do with this. You could even go back later and embellish off of. So I could actually, 
uh, take a thread and embellish off of every single one of those little purple beads here and you could get a really great little pattern going around your bracelet as well. So again, this was just a stitch tutorial. It's not for a finished product. It's just to give you guys some ideas of ways that you can utilize odd count uh, tubular or circular peyote. And um, if you make any really great projects with it, we would love to see them on the Facebook page or the website. So member, our, make sure to go to our member gallery and submit um, a beautiful picture of whatever you make with tubular peyote. We'd love to see it. Until next time, bye guys.